We often think of thunderstorms as developing in sort of a haphazard way, but there are plenty of thunderstorm systems that have an underlying organization. And one that's fairly common this time of year is called a mesoscale convective complex, or MCC for short. Now mesoscale means middle-sized, and MCC affects less area than a large low pressure system, but MCCs are much bigger than phenomenon such as tornadoes. Convective implies strong vertical motions, the kind that can produce thunderstorms. And complex simply means that individual thunderstorms work together, kind of bundling, showing some organization. Officially, MCCs have to satisfy certain requirements, and this one from a few weeks ago is a pretty good example. They have to be nearly circular. That shows up pretty well on this color-enhanced infrared image. Cloud top temperatures must be minus 25 or less over an area of at least 100,000 square kilometers and minus 60 or less over an area at least half that size. And here I've circled the cloud tops that meet those temperature thresholds. Now for perspective, Oklahoma is about 180,000 square kilometers in area, so no problem satisfying those criteria here. And by the way, you have to be up about 40,000 feet for the temperature to be minus 60 or less. So these were some big time storms. And finally, these conditions have to last for at least six hours. Now let's follow the life cycle of this MCC. Here's where it's developed. Uh, here's where it developed. You can just see the beginnings of some convection there in uh, north central Kansas. This time, this was mid-afternoon. Now unlike most thunderstorm systems, MCCs tend to form with weak upper air winds. In this case, the jet stream was well to the north, but MCCs do require a low-level jet stream, a pipeline of moist air a few thousand feet above the ground, and that usually comes in from the Gulf of Mexico, and that was certainly the case here. Now, as we go forward, watch the MCC get bigger in size and the clouds grow taller. We know that because the oranges and reds indicate the coldest cloud tops. Also notice that the MCC doesn't reach its peak intensity until the wee hours of the morning. This is 1 a.m., and that late-night peak is another mark of these systems. As we head forward towards sunrise and just beyond, the MCC weakens, and that is generally how these mesoscale convective complexes work. Now, MCCs actually provide much of the warm season rains that keep the corn and wheat belts of the Middle West in business, but they often produce too much, resulting in flash flooding. And it was an MCC 30 years ago tomorrow that produced the Johnstown flood of July 1977. Thunderstorms moving over and over the same path dumped more than 12 inches of rain in parts of the Connemaw Valley in just seven hours, resulting in severe flash flooding. Parts of downtown Johnstown were under 10 feet of water. There were more than 75 fatalities and more than $300 million in damage. Now, because of their size, shape, and heavy rain potential, MCCs have been informally called land hurricanes. And occasionally, the circulation from a weakening MCC gets out over the ocean and forms the seed for a tropical system. That's what happened with the MCC that caused the Johnstown flood. Fred will be back with the extended forecast next.